Hello and welcome back to another video in our series of painting tutorials. In this video I'm going to be showing you the basics of digital painting and one of the easiest methods of digital painting that I have found. So the application that we're going to be using, the reason why I say it's the easiest is because it does not require you to download anything nor does it require any special privileges to install. In fact it is all based online. So if we go to Google and we Google the keyword photo and then P, it's the first option that comes available. And I actually already have it pulled up right here. So this website, the first thing you're going to notice is a big photo P advertisement. Just go ahead and close out of that. This is the program that is all based online. And what this program is, it is a photo editing or photo painting application. It is very similar to Photoshop. In fact, it's so similar that it looks almost identical. There are very few things that are different about it, but for the most part, if you can use PhotoP, you can use Photoshop. So what you want to do to first start off is go here to New Project, and you're going to be greeted with a few dialog menus that you need to select. First off, you're going to notice the width and the height. This application is based online, therefore it is set up for mainly online use, but you can use it for painting. The, what we have it set up for right now is 1280 by 72 resolution and it's set to PX which is known as pixels. This is perfect for Facebook images or YouTube covers or Twitter profiles or things like that. But if you're going to have the end result be a painting that you want to eventually have printed, you're going to need to change this to a more commonly used printing measurement, for instance, like inches. And a very common size for printing is 12 by 18. So I'm going to change the width of this to 18 and the height to 12. DPI is the resolution of the image. If your final destination of this is to go online, and publish your artwork online for other people to view, then you are perfectly fine with saving this at 72 dpi. If, however, you plan on having your photo printed, you're going to want to change the dpi ratio to 300 at a minimum. 300 is standard photo quality, while 600 is HD photo quality. So, if you plan on having it printed, you want to stick at 300 as a minimum. However, for this tutorial, I'm going to keep it at 72. And once you have this done, just go ahead and hit Create. And as you can see right here, we now have a new window created. Now the beautiful thing about painting digitally is this section right over here, which is called the Layers panel. And what layers are, uh, think of them kind of like transparent pieces of paper. So if I create a new layer right here, I can come over here to my paintbrush tool and I can draw a picture on there. Now that layer has a red drawing on it. If I want to add a new layer and say change this color to a blue, I can draw right over top of that and it's on a new layer so it does not affect the layer that is under it. For instance, I can take this right here and I can move it down and make layer 2 behind layer 1 and now the red is above the blue. Or, let's just say that I want to move the red altogether, I can move it anywhere that I want to because it's on its own separate layer. However, let's say that I have the red layer selected and I decide to paint on the green or paint on the red with green. Since I am currently on the same layer as the red, that green is now permanently stuck on there. So unless I go back and undo it with Control Z, I can step back. It's stuck on there. You can't just move it. So that's something to know about layers. And that's why painting digitally is so well thought of as far as artists are concerned because in real life you don't have layers that you work with but digitally you have the gift of layers so you can really work with your artwork. 
Now, there's lots of tools that you can use with this application. They are listed right here on the left. I am not going to be going over every single one of them in depth. I'm just going to explain what they are. The first one right here is your selection tool or your move tool. And that will allow you to have a layer selected and move it wherever you want to move it. What I tell my students to do is to toggle on these two options right up here where you have auto select turned on which auto select will let you select one layer and then if you click on another layer it'll let you move that layer too and it'll auto select and change the layers for you. And then I have them select also transform controls. This will allow you to move and transform these layers any way you want. And a little a shortcut key for you if you want to scale this all you have to do is hold shift while you are scaling and it stays in the correct proportion and it scales correctly. When you get it to the right place hit enter and it gets locked in. This next tool down is a selection tool and actually these three tools are all selection tools. I'm just going to use this as an example. Make sure you have your layer selected that you want. Use your selection tool and you have a square or a circle and I selected the rectangle or square. Once you have the, that selected you can actually move with the layers if you come up here to the move tool and you can move the different selections so it'll let you select. Now if you have an area selected like that and you want to deselect the easiest way is to just select the selection tool and click off to the side. That will deselect everything that you have selected. The lasso tool is the same thing as the square or circle selection. It's just with these you're more free form so you can actually draw what you want to select. This tool, the quick selection tool and the magic wand tool, those are used for color selection so you can quickly select colors. The next tool down is crop and a crop tool will allow you to select a certain portion of the artwork and crop it down to that size. I'm going to hit control Z and go back eye dopper tool is one that if you notice right down here I currently have green selected if you select the eyedropper tool you can select a color and it will change to that color as the color that you have selected the band-aid tool or spot healing tool is used for uh, correcting blemishes or correcting red eye and photographs the paintbrush tool is what we're going to be using primarily and what this is it is what it sounds like it's a paintbrush tool so using this tool you can actually paint and I currently don't have a layer selected so I'll need to select a layer and you can paint. Now what you want to look at is the brushes inside of your painting tools because the brushes will really determine what you're going to be using the brush for. So with the brush tool and the brushes right here this is what your brush tips are going to look like so I can actually see right here I just made a square because that was my paintbrush tool. What I tell pe my students to use for their paintbrush is actually this one right here. And that is more like an actual painting. It has the more fluid look of a painting, kind of like this right here. The opacity is how light the color is going to be. If it's 100% opaque, that means that it is completely 100% that color. I tell my students to lower it down because it, it allows for better blending. It kind of makes it look more like watercolor if that's what they're going for. Flow is how much of the uh, paint or the color is going to go down at one given time. All right, let's move on down. The next tool that we're going to look at is the stamp tool or the clone tool. The clone tool, it's very simple. If you hold control you can actually select a area that you want to copy and then you can just move down and start copying it over and wherever you select it it's going to copy it exactly the way that you see it there so as you can see I'm starting to copy everything that was right up here the eraser tool pretty self-explanatory you get that and you can erase the gradient tool is used for laying down a wash of a color and uh, laying it down over the whole area that you have selected or the whole layer. And how that works, if you have that selected, it's actually going to default to the first color and the second color and blend between the two, as you can see right here. Or you can select preset colors that you can use. 
You also have linear, which is straight up and down like this. I'm going to show you. It goes from blue to black. Radial, which will go from blue to black going outward. Angle, which will have an angle. And there's all kinds of different settings for this. So you can just practice around with it. And I don't really need that up front, so I'm just going to move that to the back. Next is the Blur Tool and Smudge Tool. The Blur Tool is used for blurring out areas. So you can adjust the strength or how much you want to blur, the size and the hardness of the brush. So I'm going to put it right here, and I'm just going to show you that this... Oh, I need to have the layer selected I want to blend. And as you can see, it's starting to get really fuzzy. Now this works well for blending. It's not the tool that I personally like for blending, but it does work for blending. What I like to do for blending paint is the smudge tool. And the reason why is because you can actually push it around like you are blending colors on a canvas. So if I raise this up, select that brush, I can adjust the way that my colors are being smudged together. For instance, that right there is now smudging the background and the foreground and kind of smudging all my colors together and make it look more like I am actually blending these colors. That's the tool I like to use. Basically, the best way that you can learn how to paint in your style is just to experiment with it and find out. The Dodge and Burn tool, they are used to either brighten a color or darken a color. It is used, uh, you can use it whenever you are uh, trying to shade. A lot of my students use it for skin tones and things like that whenever they're trying to just get a little bit lighter or make a shadow. You can do that. Text tool will allow you to create text. Pen tool will allow you to do uh, drawings kind of like architectural drawings or things of that nature where they're more precise just like that and then you have a path tool the path tool is primarily used for whenever you're using your pen tool so using your path tool you can actually select different areas and you can adjust it as needed just like this and then you have your shape tool. The shapes, pretty self-explanatory, let you do shapes. You have the zoom options, which are right down here. You can also zoom in with the, I believe it is control plus will allow you to zoom. Yes, it will. So you can zoom in like that, or you can zoom in with the zoom tool, which will allow you to zoom in and out going left to right. It does not work up and down. The move tool will allow you to move everything around as you need it. And those are the basic functions of this application. So whenever you get an artwork done and you want to try to save it, what you need to do is you need to go to File, Export As, and you can see all the different things that you can save it as. I would suggest PNG because it has a better save quality as opposed to JPEG because JPEGs typically, they, they kind of get blurry. So I always tell my students to go with PNGs. PNGs are much better. And you can adjust the quality of it. You can adjust where you're going to save it, and you can just save it directly wherever you want to. I hope that this video has helped. If you like this video and would like to see more painting tutorials, please subscribe to our channel. We like to update our videos frequently. However, we don't update them as much as we would like. But we always try to keep you up to date with latest painting and tutorials and things like that. So until next time, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Have a great, wonderful day.